you can hear the leaves, you can hear the birds, if they're high up in the canopy or low down. It gives you a texture and a context and nature starts to come alive. It's not just a green blur anymore, it's a, it has depth to it. So let's descend from the top of the ridge down into the heart of the forest and as we drop down we'll get to the oldest part. What we want to do in every stage of the, of the walk is to stop, is to take notice. We want people to move softly so they create less ripples, so wildlife comes in closer, so they get to see it and experience it. Shinrin-yoku means taking the forest airs, so it's uh, that kind of immersion. In Japan, where the term was coined, they've been doing research since the early 1980s about the health benefits of walking in the forest. One of the things they uh, picked up on was, especially with conifer forests, but all trees in general, give out things called phytoncides. And these phytoncides are the, really the external immune system of the tree, and these volatile oils which are in the air you inhale. And what they noticed is that people who walked in the forest had an elevated immune system, natural killer cell count, for up to a month afterwards. It reduces cortisol levels, blood pressure, and in Japan, doctors now prescribe forest bathing. My background originally was research. Um, and so I wouldn't call myself a sceptic, but I think I like questioning and I like getting the answers to things. And when we started on this, it was really important to us to conduct our own research. We make sure that we understand the nature of the benefits of the, uh, the person who's come along. So we will measure blood pressure and heart rate. We will undertake pre and post surveys and we will talk to those people again further down the line. And so really listening and connecting with the individual helps us reconfigure what we offer. Tasting it traditionally would have been used uh, for sore throats. Um, it also, when I cut myself, because it's antibacterial, I, and it's like a glue, if I've got a little cut, I'll put it into the cut and seal it. In fact, some hospitals have been doing some research instead of using stitching, is putting this in. We come down to the river level and I just want to appreciate the sounds of the river, the River Team. The vast majority of people who live in cities now, who live under artificial light, don't go out, don't connect with nature. Even a city as small as Exeter, where you can see from its centre, you can see the countryside, there's some people in the city who've never ventured there for a whole host of reasons. Fingal Woods um, are owned and managed in partnership between the National Trust and the Woodland Trust. We were awarded funding from the Heritage Lottery Fund. One of our key targets was around hard to reach groups and that could be any group that would find it difficult to engage with the woodland for whatever reason. One of the big groups that came up was actually elderly people um, and people that are socially isolated. Aquifolium just seemed to align really nicely with what we were doing here. What really appealed to us about the work they're doing is the fact that it does have that body of scientific evidence behind it. That actually it's proven to have um, health and wellbeing benefits. So you can go to funders and you can go to people in the organisation and actually say, this is working, this is why we should invest in it. <laughs> I don't think we should be looking to necessarily national leaders to provide innovation. Actually, I think innovation is something that happens at the bottom and then can spark change through to the national. The agility of having small social entrepreneurs trying something, seeing what works, learning from it and really contributing to a much wider debate. For me, is look at what's happening around the world. The Japanese have accepted this. They've had that journey of believing it and saying, it works, maybe we don't know exactly how, but that won't stop us 
because we know that people benefit and I think that commissioners and clinicians need to say how did they go on their journey to get where they were and learn from that. At the end of each forest bathing session we do a style of uh, tea ceremony and the tea we've got is Douglas fir, it's very high in vitamin C it's got some wild foraged water mint in there, so that's been added to it as well. And it's been sweetened with uh, birch syrup, which I tapped from the trees this year. There's a quote that in particular I really like from our participant on one of the aquafolium sessions, and that was, I found my smile in the forest. And I think it's just that for some people, they come on these sessions and they're in a really, really dark place. And whether it's the fact that they've come out in spring and they've seen a bird busy gathering all of its nest materials, and they see that actually elsewhere life is going on and that new life is being generated, and they leave just in a completely different place. Yeah, they leave again with drive and motivation and enthusiasm, and I think that is really powerful to see.